Joining me now is Trump Great America PAC co-chair and former Reagan campaign pollster, one of my favorite people walking on planet Earth, Ed Rollins. Thank you. I wasn't. I was never a pollster. This is the pollster. <laughs> You've never been a pollster? Uh, no, I've read a lot of polls. Uh, <laughs> Well, I apologize. That's perfectly all right. That's no, no insult to be called a pollster. You had two great ones on the show today. So this comes, of course, the Ryan's out, Kelly in. At, this comes after the president's new communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, Scaramucci. I know the man, and I can't pronounce his name. Sorry, Anthony. Publicly clashed with Priebus last week. What do you make of this? Because uh, the journal re refers you, to the you, White House as a chaotic mess. You correctly said earlier you didn't want to have a Twitter account. I imagine Anthony doesn't enjoy his Twitter account uh, the last two days. He needs to shut it off. And, uh, you know, we all know Anthony. We all have great affection for him around here. Uh, I don't know of anybody who ever had a worse start than he had. Uh, it's like a guy, a new quarterback, going on the team and throwing four interceptions on the first time he gets the ball. He's got to rise up to the occasion. He's got to basically, there's a new, new game in town. Uh, the critical thing about General Kelly is he's going to be in charge. Uh, the president's obviously in charge of the White House. But you need to structure a White House in which you have an orderly process, in which you have people with varied responsibilities, and you can't have 35 people walking in to see the president anytime they want to. And I've worked well, in Well, this is one of the interesting developments is the, the president uh, announced the, the appointment of Scaramucci right. first, and they said Scaramucci was going to report directly to the president and not to the chief of staff who was then Priebus. Now he puts in a new chief of staff. <coughs> is Scaramucci going to report <coughs> Well, no, to no, no to communication director has ever had direct access. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a top, uh, White House has a ranking assistant to the president is the top ranking. They're all assistant to the president. So, I mean, there's eight or ten of them. Uh, Kellyanne is. I was when I was in there. And, and by that, you basically are in pretty much every meeting the president's in if they so choose. Uh, then, there's a, then there's a deputy assistant, a special assistant, the three commission ranks. You just can't have 10, 15 people uh, uh, walking in anytime they want to. You've got to have an orderly process. Uh, historically, the chief of staff decides who gets to see the president, and, and they don't keep people out. It's just you just can't walk in any time because there should be an orderly process. Well, to that point, Ed, the Wall Street Journal had a editorial over the weekend that said the title of it was Priebus wasn't the problem that it's you, Mr. President, that was the problem. And the reason, they, and this is what they write, the reason that Bryant's Priebus wasn't as effective as he could have been is because Mr. Trump wouldn't listen to him and would not let him establish a normal decision-making process. Uh, Do you have any sense of whether that process and that hierarchy will be put in place? Well, in, in, in fairness to Priebus, that, that piece is exactly right. Uh, Priebus is a very able man and has, is, has legions of friends around this country. He was an extraordinary party chairman. Uh, and the problem is they didn't define the roles. You had Kellyanne, who went in as a fancy title counselor of the president. You had uh, you had uh, 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 chief strategist uh, Bannon. You had Priebus, uh, and they never defined the roles. Uh, and so Priebus basically is put in there with the president saying, "Well, you know, you don't have to report to him. You can come into me, or you can talk to me, or what have you." I mean, everybody from his former security guard to his former press person here. I, so you, you've got to have an orderly process. Uh, it's not Trump Incorporated anymore. It's the presidency of the United States. Uh, Kelly is a man of, of order. Uh, he will put discipline in there, or he won't stay. That's the reality. He's not going to basically, at a four-star general, after 45 years in the military, he's not going to go in there just to. Uh, this does not enhance his title, being chief of staff well, it, of the White and House. Do, and uh, I've always in not to make it about me, but what has served me well in keeping a job all right. these years, not just here but everywhere, is you follow a chain of command mm -hmm. and you never do an end around. Um, who is your immediate report? Who well, the, is your immediate the, superior? The, the, pro the problem with the president is the president has, has run a company very successfully in the past. Uh, and, and he has he has a train of thought that, that moves very quickly in the course of a day. He, he's not a disciplined man himself, per se. So you're stepping on stories. You have a story that basically is, okay, health care is, is the big issue on Friday. What are we talking about on Friday? We're not talking about health care. We're talking about chaos in the White House. Uh, uh, the week before, we're talking about all kinds of different things. The reality is a president is not a manager. A president sets a tone. He goes to the country. He says, here's my agenda. Here's I want you to support my agenda. Uh, you know, he was out, not out there basically selling the health care plan. He can blame whoever he wants to at this I point I brought time. that up uh, repeatedly. Uh, and, 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 and he should have been out there for three or four weeks saying, why, this is why it works. This is why we need to have it. Uh, and you can't do that with tweets. And, and, and you're not going to stop him from tweeting. But what, what a, normally in a White House, there's 
papers that are issued or press releases, and they are they are looked at. They basically someone else looks at it and says, "Well, this is in conflict." Did you check with the generals before you do go to the, to the Secretary of Defense before you go do the the trans uh, uh, sexual thing? Uh, you know, see, so you, you just keep stepping on your story, and it's a train of thought. And I've always tried to advise candidates and, and people that I've worked for. Including presidents, don't think out loud. Think very carefully about what you <laughs> do. Don't think out loud. Wait, I want to get Lee in here real okay. quick because Lee, I'm this just is curious. Lee's bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious if the the Spicer rents thing was because of Anthony Scaramucci or there were some other things that were going on well, outside of well, you know, I, outside I, of that. They they had their reasons for not wanting Scaramucci in the White House, and they and Scaramucci in the course of the week proved that they had good reasons. Right. Uh, uh, and I, I hope Anthony could basically. Correct it and straighten it out. Uh, we're, all, we're all going to be cheering for him, but he got damaged. Uh, and the equally as important, there's 30 or 40 people that came into that White House that were basically previous people, and they're all sitting there today saying, "Am I going to have a job? Or right. I, what, what, what happens here?" You had three or four power centers, including a son and a daughter, uh, a daughter and a son-in-law, who have total access. Uh, uh, and, and Jared gets a new assignment every every day. So I think the reality here is I hope the general can come in. This is, this is the process, how it works, uh, and we'll see how we move forward. Front page of the Wall Street Journal, Trump deepens GOP divide, and I don't know if I agree with that headline. I think that the divide in the GOP is there, and it's very easy for them to use the president as well, an well, excuse he, he, for that. Well, he, he did not close the gap. Let's just simply say this. Uh, yeah. it, it was very, very, usually, and, and, and you're, you're the expert on this, usually the first six months is a honeymoon period. A new president, even if they have an unpopular campaign, they close it. You add people, you bring more support, you get stronger in the polls as you go forward uh, and put your agenda forward. This president has gotten weaker by the day. And the party now is, you, you now have a former chairman who's very popular, who's now basically been discarded, and, and he was discarded. He was not treated well. I mean, the idea that if you wanted to make the change, you say thank you for your service, you give him a medal, you do something, you give him a farewell in the Roosevelt Room, you don't get him off the Air Force One and tweet. That we just replaced him. We'll uh, leave him alone sitting in the SUV. Right. And, and I, so my sense is that uh, uh, there's a lot of repair work that has to be done. Historically, Augusts are a terrible, terrible month for the presidency. I'm hoping our August was in July, and they <laughs> use they use August to fix the system here and get ready come September. Right.